Are mains purifiers necessary? Well, <laughs> I'm not sure hi-fi is necessary, but, but I get the gist, so we're, we're going to answer the question. It comes from Don in Bath, England. You got to ask yourself, is that, I mean, I know there were Roman baths and things. Is that where the word bath came from? Anyway. Hi, Paul. I love the videos and your dedication to high-end audio. Thank you, sir. I've learned more in the last year than I thought there was to know. Oh my God, my head is so full of stuff to know. <laughs> I keep, these things are therapeutic for me because I get to get them out, you know. And so once they get out into the wild, then they have sort of a life of their own. <laughs> my question is, I have various main con mains conditioners and purifier products from Russ Andrews in the UK. If I had a PS Audio power regenerator, would I use these conditioner products and would they, or would they be unnecessary uh, as opposed to some benefit? Thanks for your time. It's much appreciated. Regards, Don, who I believe must be a clean fellow since he lives in Bath, England. That's probably a very lame joke and my sincere apologies. <laughs> I can't resist. It's just you and me, right? So, oh boy, that's a hard one. One side of me wants to say, well, the cleaner the power you start with, then whatever else you do to it is only going to be additive. So if you could you know, use Russ Andrews' device to take off some high frequency garbage, some, some you know, uh, common mode noise, then the regenerator would have less to do. And, and that sounds really good, only it doesn't really work that way. And in my experience, you typically wind up doing more damage than you do good. And I'll tell you why. It, although it's very slight. And, and look, a lot of people do it. You know, you would not be alone. And, and I, I get it. You, you've invested this money and you'd like to, I mean, if this works, why not add something else and make it even better? And you can do that. And, and you know, before you, if you get a regenerator, you should. Plug it in and give it a try. What I don't like about conditioners, regardless of who, I'm sure Russ Andrews stuff is fine, what I don't like about conditioners are a couple of things. One, they can't really fix the true problems of power. And those problems are high impedance. In other words, you have long lengths, hundreds and hundreds of feet of wire between the utility pole and you, which has resistance, and that resistance is impedance, and it will drop as you dynamically draw power from it acts like a radio receiver, or an antenna. So, you know, that's one of the big problems. Another problem is the, the and this is related, the steadiness of the power. Well, not long-term steady, that doesn't make such a big deal. But short-term steadiness of the power, as, as, you know, when you turn things on and off, when you draw power dynamically, all of that is working against you and that impedance problem I spoke of. And then noise, absolutely. Noise, um, the shape of the sine wave where it's lopped off on the top because our neighbors are all sharing the same power as we are and they're all sucking power at the same rate that you are right at the peak and that just pulls down the peak energy available. Conditioners can do nothing but make that worse. What they can do is they can remove some of the radio frequencies and the cell phone noise and all of that, and they can protect your equipment. Good stuff. But does that really help the sound? In my experience, it doesn't. It maybe makes it a little cleaner, but it's at a price. The expense for it, and you can try it yourself. Plug in straight to the wall and listen to a fairly, um, what's the right word? rich piece of music. I, I always like a, a, an acoustic, a closely mic'd acoustic guitar and, and a singer, especially one that's recorded in a relatively live room. If you have a resolving system and you're listening to it, you can hear all the overtones and the ringing of the string after it's been plucked. 
um, the room picks up those sounds and it reflects off of the walls, very subtle. But on a good recording, you should be able to hear all of that. Now, the experiment I like to do is have people listen with and without a conditioner. And what you notice is that, yep, it sounds cleaner, but a lot of that rich, subtle overtones of stuff bouncing off the walls, of the ringing of the string after it's been plucked, gone, masked, done. And that's that impedance business that power conditioners make worse. So uh, it's easy to get fooled. I mean, the first time I ever heard a power conditioner, and it was a very expensive, excellent one, my first reaction was, wow, that's awesome. Listen, I mean, clear difference, cleaned up the sound. But over time, I noticed it's missing the life that it once had. And a regenerator does exactly the opposite. Whatever you have coming out of the wall will be enhanced. Why? Well, because the problems that are causing the reduction in this extra detail and whatnot uh, is, are specifically the shape of the wave and the impedance of the wire. Now, with a regenerator, you get a perfect wave. Not to be a funny guy, but yeah, you get a perfect wave out of it. You do. The distortion goes down. Uh, and the impedance drops down to, to micro-ohms from ohms. I mean, we're talking, you know, thousands of times lower impedance with a regenerator. So one raises it and loses a lot of that detail and information. The other does the opposite and brings it out and gains it. So I think you're just going to make the job harder for the regenerator, and I would advise you not to do it. But do try a regenerator. They, they really do work. Okay. Thanks, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.